Today we are going to look at how to zoom in and out on videos and titles, which is just what you wanted for your video creation. Welcome back once again to Power Director Made Simple. Now let's take a quick look at how all of the magic is done. On my timeline is a short video segment taken from the raw video of a recent project which displays the About Power Director window. Because the text in the window is so small, I added a zoom in and zoom out function in order to make it much more readable for the viewer. Here is exactly how that was done. As I scrub the playhead forward, the About window appears at about the 707 second position. I'll place a clip marker there by pressing M on the keyboard. At about the 2010 mark is when the window starts to disappear. So I'll place another clip marker there. Now these clip markers are not necessary for adding keyframes, but sometimes in dealing with a long clip it makes things easier to find as you'll see in just a moment. There are two main methods of bringing up the keyframe editing windows. The first is to click on the new keyframes icon above the timeline to bring up the keyframes setting window. This window shows all the functions to which keyframes can be set. All those functions are shown along the left side and each shows the little white diamond symbol to add or remove a keyframe at the current position of the playhead. At the top is a mini timeline for the clip that is being shown as well as the playhead. And you should notice the two clip markers are also now shown on the mini timeline. I want to point out one other important thing right now and that is you can zoom in and out on the mini timeline by clicking and dragging the mouse either left or right. Now this might help you get a more precise timing, especially if the clip is very long. I don't like using this particular window because it can be only as wide as the preview window will allow it, and only as tall as the room left over from the timeline below. I prefer to use the other method of adding keyframes. I'll close out this window for now, and then hit F2 to bring up the Advanced Overlay Editing window. The best thing about using the Advanced Overlay Editing window for keyframing is that it can appear full size instead of just part of a screen. You can see along the left side the same functions are available including the diamonds to add or remove keyframes. The timeline appears in the lower right side and if you look closely you should see those same two clip markers previously added. But this time the timeline appears much wider and there is much more space between the clip markers. Now for the real magic. The first thing that I like to do is to move the playhead to the start of the clip by hitting the stop button in the preview window. The video in the preview window is centered and it's full size for display. Along the left side, there are two sets of numbers that you're going to need to become very familiar with. Cyberlink Power Director sets the top left and lower right corners with a default value of 1.0. The center position in the video frame is 0.5 for both the X and Y axes. So just remember 1.0 and 0.5 if you ever need to recenter your image. With the playhead at the beginning, you can see that this image is centered with the values of 1.0 and 0.5. Now I need to move the playhead to the first clip marker at 707. I can type the value directly into the time code above the timeline and the playhead jumps to that exact spot. I'll hit Control Z or I can hit the home key to start over. Another method is that 
I can just keep dragging the playhead towards the right until the timeline slides into the needed position. I'm going to start over once again. Another method is to zoom in or out on the timeline until the marker is visible if this is ever needed. I'll click and drag to the left which zooms out and the first marker is near the center. Now on the timeline I'm going to move the playhead till it is on top of the clip marker at 707. At this point I'll create a keyframe for the scale function by clicking on the diamond alongside of the scale function on the left side which will add a keyframe at that position. If you check with the values along the left side you should see that I haven't changed anything so far for the first seven seconds. I'm still at the default centered values but the about window has just appeared and now is when I want to start zooming in on it. So the question is just how fast do I want to zoom in? Do I want to make it a very quick zoom in with just a few frames to do it? Or do I want a very slow zoom that takes maybe two seconds? Well let's try the quick zoom first. So I'm going to click on the timeline and drag to the right in order to zoom all the way in on the time. Then I'm going to move the playhead just three frames to the right to position 710. I'll click on the diamond for scale to add a keyframe. But right now my scale values are still set to the default values on the left side. Without moving the playhead, that is important. I'll change the scale values on the left side to about 1.7. Notice that the maintain aspect ratio is checked so I only have to change one value and then hit return. Also notice what the about window now looks like in the preview window. I'm going to move the playhead to the start position by clicking on the stop button. I'm probably zoomed in too far in the timeline to see what is going to happen. So just for this tutorial, I'm going to zoom back out by clicking and dragging to the left. Now you can see how close those two scale keyframes are. Let's see what this fast zoom in looks like by clicking on the play button. Pay attention to the preview window. I'll stop it as soon as the zoom in has been done. You probably are thinking that was way too fast. So let's increase the time to perform the zoom. I could delete that second scale keyframe and start over, but that isn't really necessary. I'll just click on it and slide it over a good second or two so that it takes longer to perform the zooming action. Now this is not rocket science here, so anything around two seconds will work just fine. Now let's test it again, only this time I'll just move the playhead to a few seconds before the action starts and then hit play again. Watch the preview window. Ah, much better. Look at the timeline and notice those two diamonds on the scale line. That is where all of the zooming occurs. From the default position at the first diamond to the full zoom size at the second diamond. If I scrub the playhead between those two diamonds, watch the values on the left side go up and down between 1.0 and 1.7. Congratulations, I have successfully created a zoom in using keyframes. But wait, there's more. Remember at position 2010, the about window disappears? Which means if I don't turn the zoom off, the display will continue to show that I am zoomed in on the main editing window when I don't want to be. Fortunately, I have the timeline marker that I created ahead of time at 2010. Now, even if I didn't, I could find the position by scrubbing the playhead forward until I notice the about window disappears in the preview window. 
I'm going to place the playhead at position 2010 directly over the clip marker. Now pay close attention to what I'm about to say because I know that you will probably make a mistake here. This is not the position that I want to zoom back out to the default sizes of size and being centered. I'll show you what can go wrong here. I'll create a scale keyframe at this position. Then I'll go over to the left side and change the values back to the default centered numbers. For the scale on the left side, I'm going to enter 1.0 on either height or width and then hit return. I'll move the playhead over to the 4 or 5 second position. And if I hit play, do you think everything should be just right? Watch the preview window and find out as I hit play. Whoa! As soon as it zoomed in, it started to slowly zoom back out. What happened? Well, look at that last diamond on the timeline. When you think about it, it should say hold the previous values up to this point. And then there should be another diamond about two seconds away saying to slowly zoom back out. Don't worry if you ever make this kind of mistake. I've been doing this for nearly 200 years and I still make that same mistake over and over again. So let's fix it. A fast and easy way is to just click on the last diamond. Now look at the values on the left side. They should duplicate the values from the previous keyframe. I'll change either one of the scale values to 1.7 and hit return which will change both values. Now next I'm going to add another keyframe at position 2210. So I'll move the playhead to that position by typing in 2210 in the timecode window. I'll then click on add a keyframe icon to the right of the word scale. On the left side, I'll make sure that the scale values for that one are set to 1.0. I'll move the playhead to around the 5 second mark again and hit play. Watch the preview window once again. There it zoomed in properly once again. It's coming up to the 20 second mark. Let's see if it zooms back out when the about window is closed. And that is how a zoom in and zoom out is created. It can be used on not only to zoom in on text, but to zoom in on landscape objects or people in a crowd. Sometimes, if there are objects you don't want to see around the edges of a clip, you may want to start the clip already zoomed in and keep it that way all through the clip. Try to think of other possibilities. The idea for this video was brought up by a suggestion in comments that were submitted on another video. If you would like to see any function or power director operation explained, go ahead and leave a comment about it. Otherwise, just leave a comment about what's happening with the weather in Indiana. We like to hear from you. If you made it this far in the video, then I thank you for taking the time to watch and I hope that you have learned something. I also strongly suggest for those that are new to keyframing, to go back and watch a previous video that I created that shows off a few more functions for keyframing. That would be video number 42, Keyframing the Basics. If you haven't already subscribed, go ahead and click on that big subscribe button below. I'll see you on the next one.